This then cash guy, this is a 2015 model with the battery warning light on. Uh, it's not to do with the charge rate because it's actually putting in over 14, 14 volts most of the time. So uh, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you what fault codes are stored and hopefully giving an indication as to what this fault is. <laughs> So just a quick confirmation on the fault codes that was present in this one. Two engine communication circuit fault codes and another U code U1051 which was a LIN communication fault. The process on this one was quite simple and straightforward. First of all, confirmed the charge rate was correct. Alternator was pumping in uh, the correct amount of charge rate. Battery, battery was fine, no issues there. I did pull a wiring diagram on this. But the first test that I ended up going down to do was getting the oscilloscope out because I wanted to check the LIN bus signal down at the alternator. Now this video is very much to showcase that you are limited to uh, the tools you have no matter what abilities you have. If you don't have an oscilloscope to check a waveform like this LIN bus, you're going to be passing this job off to someone else. So if you are planning to become a fault finding technician you are definitely going to have to invest in an oscilloscope to be able to do these types of jobs now having the oscilloscope hooked up i was able to see quickly that the signal was not correct it was coming in and coming out the waveform was erratic which gives me an indication that this could be a connection issue of some sort Doing a wiggling test on the wiring is something I utilize all of the time when I'm doing these types of checks. It can give you an indication as to if there's a break in the wire, if there's a connection issue, if there is maybe a bad earth by catching and pulling on different wires and harnesses and junction connectors to see if you can see any difference in the waveform as you're doing it. With this one, up at the battery on that big block connector going to the positive and the uh, wiring harness and loom that comes from there, I was able to see that the waveform was dropping in and dropping out at that particular junction. Now with that information and the visibility down at the wiring harnesses, I could see that this had been worked on previously. There was connectors that were broken which secures the wiring and I was um, left in a position where I needed to disconnect the battery, get everything out of the way and put everything back the way it should be. That was my first priority and then I was going to recheck the signal after I had everything put back together to see what we could find. And when I had everything put back together, I now had a perfect LIN bus signal down to the alternator. So the fault was within the uh, connection and the wiring and the extra stress and tension that was on that loom. And I was able to clear all the fault codes and that signal returned. Now I monitored that signal in store for well over an hour on and off just confirming that there was no dropouts. I actually did a screen uh, recording of it and I made sure that there was no issues in the waveform at any time. I then was left in the process of, let's bring it for a road test and see if any faults come back or not. So I've just pulled in on the road test now so I could um, rescan the system and see if any fault codes were pending or if there was any issues logged. Uh, we have a green screen all the way across no faults detected whatsoever which is really good battery light has remained off and uh, no faults are found so like i was seeing with the limbus communication when i was monitoring the workshop for a long period of time it has signal it has continuous signal along that line and it was no there was no dropouts at all since i rerouted the uh, wiring loom resecured everything retensioned um that uh, battery back in place uh, and the uh, positive terminal one especially because that one slipping or moving uh, can cause rubbing uh, on the wiring loom on the uh, conduit there off the brackets and at times it definitely was doing that now again there was a lot of tension across a lot of these cables um, 
and whether all of those movements were causing it I can't be 100% certain I have put everything back together again done multiple wiggle tests and now for the first time since this vehicle has come to us the light is off consistently with communication all the time and again the first time this has been for a road test where the battery light has not come on so we've definitely had an improvement we've definitely had um, some success I'm gonna bring this back to the workshop now last road test of this one and if uh, no other issues occur um, this one will be going back to the customer and monitoring from there if the fall comes back at a later stage we can readdress it if not that will be it for this video and after I confirmed on the road test that I had no issues, this was ready to go back to the customer. I can confirm that this job was done many, many weeks ago and this fault has remained off. So this was a fix on this job. Now, if you ever come across a problem on this, having the right tools and having the knowledge, obviously, to um, investigate that job as well is key. But in this one, we were able to rectify it. No additional parts went into the vehicle and the customer was extremely happy that the problem was now resolved. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, please like, share, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.